Hi, my name is Winston Gao. I'm an inventor and researcher in the field of agriculture, water, and soil-based microorganisms. Soil-based microorganisms is also known as probiotics. Just a nicer name, still the same thing. Okay? Now, how in the world did we even get around in consuming probiotics? Well, probiotics actually had a very interesting history. It actually goes back to the Nazi Germany back in Second World War. And if you remember, they went into Africa and they were losing their troops left, right, and center from dysentery. And they were going like, oh my God, the water is killing our troops. How do the local people drink the same water that we drink and survive for thousands of years and we're losing our troops left, right, and center? And being Germans, they were very smart. They started to look what the natives did. And they were shocked to find how the natives handled their issue. You see, what they did is they would go to a cow or a camel and they would scoop up a little big handful of hot, warm fecal matter and they would eat it. And this is how they got the soil-based microorganism that would actually make them be able to resist the disease of whatever the waterborne problems. The Germans knew they were never going to get their troops to eat, uh, you know, S-H-I-T, uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> so they went back and they deciphered they what were the microorganisms and they start giving their troops cleaned up versions in a little tablet form. And thus the invention of probiotics was created. Actually, man has been using probiotics for thousands upon thousands of years. When you make cheese, you have lactobacillus. It's a probiotic, right? Different cheeses have different flavors because they have different kinds of lactobacillus or different strains, so they have different flavors. Uh, when you make pickles, you use fungus, fermentative fungi. They, they make different kinds of uh, pickles, again, depending on what type of fungus you have in there, uh, or mixture of fungus and lactobacillus and other types of uh, probiotics, without getting into real fancy long Latin names, uh, you, your flavor of the food that you make is different. The nutritional level is different. Uh, you take a look at the people who really are what I consider the kings of eating probiotics, and this will be your Eskimos, your Russians, your very Nordic Europeans, right? They will take uh, fish and like, for example, the Eskimos particularly, they will take fish and they'll take a seal skin and they'll open it up, layer it with fat, fish, roll it up, bear it into the ground. In about three, four months, this thing would, of course, you can you imagine the odor? Like, oh my God, bad, right? The average normal civilized person, when they opened this stuff, we would faint, literally. But to the Eskimo little child, they go, they call it happy meats. While our eyeballs are rolling with tears from the odor, they call it happy meats. Why? Because when they, they, they don't eat like a big bowl full of, no, they eat a small little golf ball size is all they give each child. And the children will line up in the village and each will get one small ball of this decayed meat, fish mixture, and they'll pop that and they become very happy because it has high energy, high nutrition, and of course the microorganisms must be incredibly high in this particular one small little ball of material. So they got to be the original, original people who are truly chasing after the probiotics because there's nothing that will come close to the volume of species and the just sheer volumes of bacteria that's in that little ball and they stay extremely healthy. And obviously you notice that it's these Nordic people that have, like the Russians eat uh, fermented uh, um, shark meat. Again, has a pretty bad odor to the rest of us, but it's really important for strong immune system because the average person in the rest of the world spends about 97% of the energy just to be in life and living this, but the Russians and the Nordic people spend 97% of their energy to keep warm. 
The rest of the world, who doesn't have this screaming cold climate, only spends 3% of our energy to keep these bodies warm. Right? So they must have good probiotics to survive. Right? So this guy gives you a, a gist of the importance of probiotics. Now, when it comes to eating probiotics, especially in the United States, especially at this juncture, there is no law governing genetic engineering. And a lot of the probiotics out there, or should I say most of the probiotics out there, are genetically engineered, and they do not need to label it. So buying probiotics that's not genetic engineered is not exactly easy. So probiotics is still important. If you're making your own pickles where you put salt and you cover it up and you brew your own uh, pickles, you'll have real probiotics in that jar and you should go for that. And if you want really broad spectrum probiotics, you can check out my websites gobeyondorganic.com will have some information on wonderful probiotics that you can go after. And remember, probiotics are the key to your immune system. Right? This is vital to staying healthy. So do not ignore probiotics. It is equally as important as drinking water. We make our probiotic products with our ideal earth water, the cleanest water you have ever tasted. For more information, please call us at 727-447-2344 or email us at info at gobeyondorganic.com or you may go directly to our website www.idealearthwater.com or www.turbo charged turmeric.com you can also order any of our products by calling us emailing us or directly on our website via our shopping cart Let's eat.